Welcome to Pause on Purpose, and so grateful that you came and joined us again today. Again, as we finish up this month on hope and hopefulness, write me on a note, phoenixpastors at gmail.com, phoenixpastors, all one word, at gmail.com. Love to hear how God's produced hope in you and, and or enhanced it or helped it grow a little bit more for you. We'd love to hear more from you. Today, we're continuing what we started yesterday about the, uh, the God who promised long ago. Now, when did he do that? Well, in Romans chapter 15, Paul does some homework for us. And so we're going to use him as our scholar today. I'm in Romans 15, verses 9 through 12. And what Paul does is he quotes three sections of the Old Testament. He quotes from the historical books written by Moses. He quotes the uh, um, worship and wisdom books by David and others, the Psalms. And then he quotes the prophets, and he uses the representative Isaiah. Now, follow along with me. I'm in Romans chapter 15, and uh, verse... Verse 9, Romans chapter 15, starting in verse 9, he writes, Therefore I will give praise to you among the Gentiles, and I will sing praises to your name. That's a psalm from, uh, that's a quote from David on Psalm 1849, promising that God would offer hope, eternal life, to the Gentiles. Now, that's significant because David was the king of Israel. Why would he be concerned about Gentiles? Because he had the heart of God, and God's heart was to reach the world through the nation of Israel. That's why he selected Israel to shine as a beacon to the rest of the world of Jehovah God. Now, the next passage is right from Deuteronomy. Let me read it for us, and then I'll give a little bit of a background. Verse 10 of chapter 15 of Romans. Again, he says, rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. This is a command that the Gentiles were to rejoice with the Jewish, because through the Jewish lineage, Christ would come and not only save the Jewish nation, but also the entire world. This is a quote from Deuteronomy 3243. Interesting part of this. This is Moses. He's giving a response to two tribes, Reuben and Gad, who wanted to live on the east side of Jordan rather than come over the Jordan River and join the other 10 tribes in conquering the land. Moses was not happy by this request. God later on said, that's okay, Moses, let him do that. But Moses gives a stern warning recorded in Deuteronomy 32. You can read it. It's quite long. It's over 50 verses. And it's basically warning these two tribes that they better not abandon their brothers and sisters on the west side of the Jordan. And they better stay faithful and true to Yahweh, Jehovah God. Otherwise, they're going to go the way of the nations. And he proves that by Moses stating that rejoice you Gentiles with this people. Deuteronomy 32, 43. This is a great promise for us as Gentiles showing that even back in the days of Moses, the promise of God was to save the Gentiles through Israel. And beloved, that's hope. The final promise is right from Isaiah the prophet. I'm going to jump right into it. There shall come the root of Jesse. And well, who's the root of Jesse? Well, that's David. And through whom came David? Well, the person of Jesus Christ when he was born in Bethlehem. Now, obviously, Jesus was... Um, also eternal God, but he came in the flesh on that one evening in the town of Bethlehem. 
And he came through the lineage of David, which makes him the, the rightful heir to the throne of David, the king of Israel. So when they put that up on the cross, the king of the Jews, they were accurate. He was and still is the king of the Jews. So Isaiah writes, there shall come from the root of Jesse and he who rises to rule over the Gentiles. In him, in Christ, will the Gentiles hope. In him, the Gentiles will hope. Amazingly, another promise from long ago, from the Old Testament, that God would save the Gentiles. People always say, well, you know, don't study the Old Testament because there's nothing in there for the church. Well, God's moral law doesn't change. And what was proclaimed in the Old Testament is illumined and explained in the New Testament. And what's in the New Testament is illustrated in the Old Testament. That's why Paul, in the beginning of chapter 15, says that these things were written for our edification. Therefore, study them. That's why we're studying them. And that's why we're looking at this passage about hope, because we see from all three major sections of the Old Testament, Moses, David, and the prophets, Isaiah, we see God promised hope long ago. So, beloved, you can go with God today because not only does he go with you, but he keeps his promises that he made long ago. Therefore, he is the God of hope. Have a great day.